Hello, everyone, and welcome to AP Physics C Mechanics here at Educator.com. I'm Dan Fullerton, and we're going to start off by talking about what is physics and what we're going to study. So our objectives here in this introduction are going to be to recognize some of the questions of physics, to list several disciplines within the study of physics, and to define matter, mass, work, and energy. So let's start off by talking about what is physics, because that's kind of a loaded question. The dictionary says physics relates to matter, energy, and their interactions. But what is matter? And what is energy? How do they interact? And more importantly, why do they care? Why do we care? Physics is kind of the study of everything. I like physics because it answers the questions you get from two-year-olds all the time. Why? 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 Why is the sky blue? Why does the wind blow? Why does my teacher smell funny? Why do objects fall down instead of up? Wouldn't it be cool if they did fall up? I'd have a list of people I was tripping outside every now and then. Up to the moon? Hmm. Why do airplanes fly? Why can't I fly? Why do the stars shine? Why do I have to eat my vegetables? All of these questions are answered by physics in some way or another. So let's start by talking about matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. You could also think of it as the amount of stuff making up an object. Anything you can touch is matter, whether it's stars or electrons or even Neil Diamond. It's matter. Now, as we talk about matter and mass, oftentimes we use them interchangeably. Matter is the stuff. Mass is the amount of stuff making up the object. And we're going to talk about two kinds of mass. We're going to talk about inertial mass, which is determined by how hard it is to accelerate an object. And we're going to be talking about gravitational mass, which refers to how large a gravitational force gravitational force an object experiences. So although they're actually different things, any time we've ever tried to measure both of these for a single object, they always come out to be exactly the same, which is awfully convenient. Inertial mass and gravitational mass are used in different lenses of looking at a problem, but they're always the exact same. All right, let's take a look at an example problem. On the surface of Earth, a spacecraft has a mass of 2 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. What is the mass of the spacecraft at a distance of one Earth radius above Earth's surface? Well, let's see. It gives us the mass, and it asks us the mass. If mass is the amount of stuff you're made up of, that's not going to change when you get away from the Earth. You still have the same amount of stuff you're made up of, so we have the same answer. 2 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. Let's take a look now at energy. Energy is the ability or capacity to do work. Well, that's not a very helpful definition unless we talk about work. Work is the process of moving an object, if we wanted to be very informal about it. So then if we put those together, we could say that energy then is the ability or capacity to move an object. And we'll refine that definition as we move through the course, but that's a good starting point for us. Now, early 1900s, in the early 20th century, Albert Einstein formalized a relationship between mass and energy that really brought all this stuff together. And you've probably seen this formula before. E equals mc squared. The mass of an object, a key characteristic of matter, is actually a measure of the energy contained in that object. And there are times when you can convert mass to energy and energy to mass. You can go from one to the other. This was very profound. We also know that the source of all energy on Earth is the conversion of mass into energy. It's where it originates. Try and think of a form of energy that didn't start that way. So, 
Physics really then is the study of everything. Try to think of something that isn't related to matter and or energy. Physics. Really, really tough to find anything that doesn't relate to those. So physics is the overarching, the master science. And starting to learn about physics is going to help lead you into a better understanding of the world around you. Now, the study of everything is quite a syllabus for us to take on. So we're going to have to narrow that down a little bit in this course. What we're going to start with is mechanics, where what we're going to cover are topics like kinematics, the study of motion, dynamics, forces, what forces do and how forces cause accelerations and change motions, work, energy, and power. We'll talk about momentum, what happens when moving objects hit other objects, what happens when objects explode, when they collide. We'll talk about things that move in circles and things that spin. We'll talk about angular momentum. We'll talk about the force of gravity, and we'll talk about oscillations, things that go in cycles, things that repeat in simple harmonic motion. Now, there's a bunch of things we're not going to cover, but here are just a few that aren't covered in the mechanics part of the course. We're not going to talk about fluids. We're not going to talk about thermodynamics or thermal physics. We're not going to talk about electricity and magnetism, but note we do have an AP Physics C course on electricity and magnetism here at educator.com. We're not going to talk about waves. We're not going to talk about optics, and we're really not going to get much into modern physics. We're going to stick with the classical mechanics with these key topics as highlighted here on the left. All right. So, as we go into our mechanics adventure, I'd like you to take just a moment and try and write down three things you'd like to learn about in physics. List them, put them away somewhere, but see if you can explain in just a few sentences how matter and energy relate to each of those areas of interest. Then we're going to see how close you are as we go through and build our understanding of the world around us in AP Physics C Mechanics here at educator.com. Thank you so much for your time and joining us on this journey. Make it a great day, everyone.